2012 thing, uh, going in line with what you were saying, is kind of a um, kind of the, the process of, of of mankind. It's kind of gone through the birth and the adolescence and the maturity, and now it's kind of reached its spiritual height, if you, if you will. Um, does that make any sense to you? I think the way that I would see it myself is that we started off and we've had all this development and we've reached the point where we're at now. And my own view about it is that when we reach this magical date we're going to get such a incredible increase in terms of our transformation that it will be that moment when we actually all link up together. That's the bit that I see is unbelievable in terms of excitement, in terms of what we're going to be able to do as human beings. Because so long as we're living in the illusion of separateness, and it is an illusion ultimately, it's very, it's a very pervasive illusion, it's very convincing, and every day I am convinced by it that I see myself as an individual, and I forget the extent to which I'm connected to all beings, but it is just an illusion, and the whole point is that there will come a time so soon when that illusion will literally fall away like scales from the eyes, and then we will realise how we all are one, always have been one, and always will be one. And, and we're talking about fifth and higher dimensions, and we're stuck mostly in the third and fourth. Certainly in terms of having a productive, useful conversation, we need to be in the third stroke fourth to be able to get the words out. Otherwise I'm going to stare at the carpet and go, hey man, look at the beautiful colours, and that won't actually help in terms of being able to communicate. So yeah, it's a real paradox, the situation that we're in, that we are feeling our way towards something which is going to be so amazing that we don't have the language for it yet. And when we do have the language for it, we won't be sharing it with words, we'll be sharing it through instantaneous telepathic communion, which is like, hey, that sounds good. What happens when the people heavily in mind get confronted with these signals? Are they going to be conflicted? Are they going to have some kind of breakdown? Yeah, breakdown before breakthrough. I think that is so true. One of the things I've certainly experienced in my life a lot is having a breakdown and every breakdown I've ever had has been so helpful. I've had many times of black depression, having gone through lots of suffering, that's kind of totally unsurprising. And what I've discovered is every single time I totally allow myself to go in that de black depression, there will be some wisdom that will come out of it and then I'll suddenly be fired up, raring to go, wanting to be an engaged human being again and it's just great. And that's the other thing I want to say to you, there has been no time in the entire history of this universe that has been so challenging or so exciting. So if you wake up one day and you think, my goodness me, I'm finding life tough, yeah, don't be surprised because that's part of it. Because it's such a special time. There are some very negative energies around as well as some incredibly positive ones and sometimes that can leave us feeling a bit done in. If you can get to the point of realising that so-called bad things actually are for your evolution and that any difficulties you've encountered in your life will have given you some kind of strength then this does get us looking at the whole concept of the Illuminati or the demons or whatever you want to call them in a totally different light because hang on a moment maybe rather than reacting against them and dare I use the word demonizing them or complaining or whining or moaning maybe we need to be grateful for them too because perhaps they're part of this process is to actually force us to look at our dark side, to look at the selfishness, the greed, the qualities that all of us have experienced at some point in the human life, and by them doing what they're doing, and we can look at that and we can think, well, that's not the way I want to be, and we can do healing to remove unwanted entities and all the rest of it, and allow them to go to heaven, don't forget a very important bit. So whilst all this is going on, it, it's like it's such a funny thing, because in a sense it is a battleground, in another sense, if you think about the classic old-fashioned view about someone being born, is they're being squeezed by their mother's body, and that can be pretty difficult to deal with, and it can feel pretty traumatic. So, in a sense, if we're all being born, I guess we're going to feel quite a bit of trauma. And what I feel very strongly about is this concept you get from Buddhism. In Buddhism, there's a concept called the Bodhisattva. And the Bodhisattva is a being that chooses to come back to the earth not to do something for themselves, but to help the others that are struggling to wake up. So the way I see it is that all those of us that are in the process of awakening, when we are with people who are stuck in their minds, we're going to be the ones that are going to be able to help them and say, hey look, 
let's look at things this way and I don't know how we'll do it at the moment but at the moment it arrives is our intuitions will help us our intuitions will guide us and they will know okay well I've just got to do this and suddenly she's going to get it or I'll, I'll say that and suddenly she'll get it that's how it'll be so we don't have to work out what the steps are six moves along in the chess game of life all we need to know is what to do right now what to do following that so that gives me a sense of confidence that when the time comes we'll know what to do for each step we go through. So it's kind of rebirth. Rebirth, yeah, that's an even better way to put it. It's like being reborn, but not as an individual, but as an entire human race. Or as a consciousness. As a consciousness, yeah, as a consciousness. We might not even recognise humanity. We might not even stick around this, this vicinity. If we've got fifth dimensional travel, everything's just a thought away. We can instantly manifest because it's we are... And yeah. that's what starts to get really exciting because then it can be possible to heal the earth of what we've done to it at the same time as travel to any place in the entire universe. I mean, this all becomes possible. Mm. Yeah. And it's like, hey, let's stick around. And some people think that some of us will make it in, in quote marks and some of us won't. What kind of. Right, well, this is where the extraterrestrial connection comes in, and we've managed to avoid speaking about this, so let's bring the connection up. Do you really imagine that we could have a universe of uncounted numbers of galaxies, and each galaxy contains so many stars we can't even begin to count them all, and many, many of these stars have got planets revolving around them, and our astronomers can see these now. Do you really mean to tell me there isn't any life anywhere out there? Do me a favour. What an absurd idea. So, this is my long-winded answer to your question. There are so many extraterrestrials which are watching what goes on on our planet so very closely because for them, as it is for us, it's incredibly exciting because this is the first time that it's possible that all human beings, all the life forms on the planet that are sentient, are actually going to wake up and get it. What has happened in the past when we've had major transformations in other planets, in other parts of the galaxy, other galaxies. What's happened is that some have made it and some have not. And it's like the traditional thing about the wheat and the chaff, where you get from the Bible that you grow the grains and some fall on the stone and they die off. The idea about this time, which is so special, and this ties in particularly with the indigo children, is that we've got children who are no longer children, they're now young adults in their teens and twenties, and what they are doing is they are developing themselves in some amazing ways. I'm very fortunate to have a daughter of this age group and a son and to have learned a great deal from both of them. And one of the things I've realised about this age group is that they have the ability to assist all those with waking up that might otherwise not make it. So for the first time we've got the genuine possibility, and this is why the other extraterrestrial races are so excited, where we could get a 100% wake up. It's never happened before in the history of this universe, 100% wake up. We normally get X% percent wake up and Y% percent stay asleep. But this time, we've got the best chance we've ever had.